Hey guys, welcome back, Taylor here. And I wanna know how many of you know people who have a really gigantic ego? These are the people who are, who come across as like really arrogant or cocky or really love getting attention. Do you know people like that? How many, how many people, raise your hand or comment below if you know people like that. I sure do. And I mean, we humans are, can be very arrogant, especially in America. And if any of you have taken Psych 101 at any point, maybe probably in college, you know that the ego is one of the biggest parts of the human mind, of the psyche. And so why is this a thing? We think about it as such like a bad thing. We think about like egotistical people being really annoying. And it's true. I mean, like, let's think about this. Let's think about that just for an example. When people that you know who have really big egos, the ego... The ego, by definition, is the part of the mind that keeps us in touch with the real world. It keeps us aware of our relationships and our responsibilities and the things that we interact with on a daily basis. And so it keeps us connected to the outside world, keeps, keeps us connected to that. So someone you think of who is really egotistical and has a really big ego or is really arrogant is just really consumed by their role and their part in the outside world. Like someone with a really big ego might think that they are the best lover or that they're so good at work or you know that they are the strongest person in the gym or something like that. But that's just a message about like, oh, this is me, this is like this is how I stack up. To people around me. This is how I stack up to the outside world doing these externalized activities. Now, I want to, I don't want this to go to the egotistical people's heads, but the ego is actually positive. Not a big ego, everything in moderation, folks, but having an ego and having it being in touch with your ego and being aware of your ego is positive. Now, here's why. So, Last week on Instagram, I posted a little message about being your true self and how trendy that is these days. And we get these messages of be yourself, be authentic, etc. That a lot of people put pressure on themselves to be true to themselves as though it's this thing that they have to be searching for. And if they get it, that they just have to hold on to it. When really, even if you figure out how to be your true self or how to be authentic and true to yourself all the time, that's not the, you still have to maintain that. You still have, you can't just lose 50 pounds. You have to keep those 50 pounds off, right? And so being your true self, the true self is the part of the mind that's actually separate from the ego. And it's closer to that part of us that connects with the world on a much deeper level, it connects to the universe or who you might call the divine or what you might think of as the divine or the universe. And so it's separate from the ego, but they have to relate to each other. So here's why. Think about it like yin and yang. They're two opposing forces that never defeat each other. They're always just kind of like spinning against each other at all times, but they're always together. There's no winner or loser. So think about that you need a balance between knowledge of your true self and authenticity and your ego. Because think about this, if you have, if you spend too much time completely in your true self, the one that's like closer to the divine, that's like connected in nature and connected to the deeper levels of the universe, then you might forget to go to work. Your relationship might might be hindered. You might not you might lose friendships because you're too zen out. You might be too detached from the responsibilities. You might forget to pay bills, what have you. Similarly on the other end of the spectrum, if you have way too much of an ego and you're too arrogant, then you're also going to lose friends. <laughs> you also might think you're too good for paying bills or that you're the best person in your office. And you might not get a promotion or something like that. But if you can have some kind of balance of the two, if you can create a healthy balance of the two, then you can stay true to yourself. You can maintain integrity to you and what makes, what fulfills you day to day. 
on the authentic and deeper level while also maintaining your ego in the sense of remaining connected to these more tangible outside world kind of responsibilities that you have. It's this beautiful balance that if you're able to strike it, you get to be yourself and you get to be fulfilled in no matter what you do on a daily basis. All the interactions you have, all the work you have to do, the workouts, the relationships, it doesn't matter, etc. So think about that. Think about your own level of ego. Has anybody ever called you an egotistical person? So think about whether or not you feel like you are more true to yourself or maybe you're really egotistical or where you might just fall on that spectrum. It's a beautiful balance to strike. And so if you want help with that, please go ahead and click the link down below to my website and schedule a, talk, schedule a time to talk with me about it. I would love to help you kind of like figure that out. But, um, but otherwise, if you have thoughts on it on your own, if answers are coming to mind about how egotistical you are or not, or how true to yourself you are, please go ahead and comment below. I wanna hear, I wanna hear what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for a knowledge bomb like this every week, and I look forward to talking to you all again soon.